What have you got in your hand there, Lee? I have got the Tireless T200 iron. Yeah. And I've got the Swixen ZX5 iron. Okay, so we're going to have a little go with these two today. Yep. Have you ever hit these clubs before? I'm sure you have, because you I've, like a good old tinker. I do like to play. I've not hit this yet. Okay. Because um, these have only just come in, but I've been playing with this one quite a lot with um, testing I've been doing, and this is a contender for the bag this year, this one. Wow, another contender. <laughs> But this is a serious contender. So before we get going, which one stands out to you the most, just from purely the looks on them? That one, ZX5 for me. Does it? I think it looks a lot better than uh, the T200 personally. From Just from the shelf appeal? Yeah, so if I was had them looking at me like that, yeah. I would be drawn to this over this. Okay. Guys, Dan Hendrickson here. We're at Ashbury Manor today. I'm up here with Lee and we're doing a little bit of head-to-head -head testing. So we're gonna put these two clubs together. It's kind of like a bit of a buyer's guide in some way. So we're gonna give you some ideas on what they look like, what they feel like, but we're then gonna put them together with numbers. So we're gonna hit like 10 shots with each club, give you an idea of what we feel about them. Lee playing off 13, myself, professional. So we're gonna give you sort of two ideas um, from two levels of, let's say, golf. And hopefully this will be able to help you when you come to decide on what clubs you wanna put in the bag. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And uh, for now, let's get going with these irons. GC quad lined up, clubs are dotted up, and we're gonna hit up. probably, what, 10 shots with each? Yeah, yeah. Get some numbers. This is gonna be studio orientated, so we're gonna get some numbers with it, and then um, and then give an average of what those numbers are kind of giving to both of us. Yep, okay? exactly that, yeah. Let's hit a couple of shots. So we're gonna start off with the ZX5. Yeah. Um, so we've put in, Obviously I've got adjustments in this, so we put in the 6.0 shaft, which is what we would use anyway. Um, and I just love the look of this thing. Absolutely love the look of it. It's a, just a great club. So, just sounds who, so good. who are these kind of clubs aimed at? Um, so these are fairly strong lofted, 31 degrees of loft. So For a seven iron. For a seven iron. So I would say it's sort of designed for someone sort of high te like low teens to 20 handicap I would say. Right. Um, someone who wants to move away from those super game improvement irons but hasn't quite got the confidence to move to the player's iron. Yeah. This kind of sits in the middle perfectly um, and what you're not going to get with this kind of club is a flyer so it's it's quite a consistent club I found when it comes to yardages as well. And and for that reason you're saying that you're not going to get a flyer because of the spin numbers that they're coming out is, is good? For me this is quite a low spinning club because my launch angle is uh, quite low with this. Um, but it still doesn't affect the peak height and the descent angle, so it still works really well at getting the ball up in the air. So it kind of counterbalances each other. It's just, it's just a really good club I've found so far. And top line then, just tell me about the looks of that one from the top line and things like that. So this is quite a thin top line, considering like the, the mass that's behind the club. Yep. Um, but what I do find, the only thing that puts me off is it's slightly square yeah, okay. um, at the top. So, But when you look down at it, because it's um, matte going into chrome, it doesn't look too offensive. So it's, it's not super confidence inspiring with being thick, but it's not super thin that like you just look at it and think this is going to hurt if I hit it. Feel? Oh, these like these just feel so good. I think Strixen are up there with like when people say nothing feels like a Mizuno. I think Strixen feels so good. The you know forged head, it just feels phenomenal, and it sounds really really good. You just get a really nice firm crack off it when you hit it out the centre. Right, T two hundred. How did that first swing feel with that one? Yeah, it feels good. Um, it's. It's just, it sounds good, it feels good, it's a, it's a decent iron. So visually, how does that Titleist look to you compared to the Shrixen? Um, visually, it looks like it's a thinner top line. Yeah. And that's a lot down to the fact that the top line sort of ends here and then chamfers off yeah. into chrome. So visually, it looks thinner, but actually the top line's a lot thicker than the ZX-5. But the way it sort of is 
shown it looks a lot thinner so it's and what do you think though from like let's say talk about it from a confidence point of view if you've got a player of a higher handicap are they going to want something chunkier or are they going to want something a little bit thinner or is it come down to personal preference individuals uh, it's personal preference but i think if you're that kind of player that's a high handicapper and needs that confidence then you'd probably be looking at the t300 anyway yeah um so this is someone who's maybe progress like i said with the zx5 wants to progress away from that thicker line and wants to go into something a bit more gamey yeah um, as opposed to sort of looking at one end of the spectrum to the other so it's quite a good step down to the to sort of like mid-teens i think Does feel good though. Right, my go. Right, Dan, what do you think? Shop appeal. So, how's it going to look when I go into that pro shop and look at that on the shelf? I like the fact that the Titleist have got that shiny kind of chrome look to it. I think that's kind of, it's it's jumping out in the initial looks. If I was putting them side by side, this one would jump at me because of that shine. But I think for class wise, for just purely like the class of it, that sort of matte kind of off chrome kind of look that you're getting out of the Shrix, and I think that I would absolutely love to have that in my golf bag, probably over that. But initially that's the attraction, that one there jumps out to me, but I think definitely the Shrixen would go in the bag just from purely shop appeal. Well, Dan, talk to me about the Strixen. So I'm absolutely with you on this one, Lee. I think that top line to me is just, it's too square. Like it look, when I look down at it, I want to see a little bit more of a rolling effect on that top line. Whereas this one now, I don't think it's overly big, but because it's so flat and squished down that I think that it maybe looks big in my eyes. I think from an overall profile of the club, I don't think for this particular model, I don't think it looks too offset. So I think it's quite nice to look at. But that, again, that's just from my personal view looking down at that. I think actually for a lot of golfers coming from maybe a a game improvement iron blending into this i think that actually that is just enough of a move from that top end or that top line of those other uh, clubs i think this one here will actually still give the confidence but start to start thinking more along the lines of maybe a a player's iron should we say but all in all first looks very impressive looking down at it from a feel though a little hard off the face so whether that was just that I've got a few strikes, maybe a little bit high up the face, but I'm certainly feeling like there's a bit of vibration shuddering up through the club. And I do get that with clubs that when I come into this kind of bracket, I do tend to find that those sort of medium ground ones, not necessarily a blady eye, and a blady iron will start to feel soft to me. And when you move up into sort of game improvement, they get a bit more flex off the face. So you almost feel like you're getting a softer feel from that. But these kind of that are trying to get in between that, they tend to feel quite a bit too hard for my liking off the face. Are you sure you didn't thin it? No, I nailed that. <laughs> T200. T200. It was a little bit like this with the AP3. I wasn't a massive fan of it. I actually, to be fair, I do like the overall look of the head. It's just, it's so offset. It's, I don't really understand why that Titleist have to make it quite this offset. I don't think it needs to be this offset. Um, maybe there's something in the R&D of it that needs to make it like that, but I don't feel from a visual that it needs to look this offset when you're trying to blend or trying to find that happy medium ground between a, a game improvement iron to maybe a player's iron. I actually would consider even at one stage of playing these clubs if there was no offset. If I could have brought that offset off of it, I would have absolutely loved the look of it. I think it's a it's a nice um, size of head, as in from sort of heel to toe. I think that the size of it, I think really, really works. And comparison to what the Shrixen is, that top line is no smaller than the Shrixen, but like Lee said, it just rolls off. So it rolls off the back. So when you look down at it, it kind of looks like a thinner top line, but actually it's just as big as that one. So it, for, for lots of players, it's gonna feel like there's plenty there for confidence, but also for someone like me who wants a thinner top line, I think it really, really works as well. But again, from that strike performance from this club, it again just feels very, very similar. If, if, if you blind tested me right now with these two clubs, 
it wouldn't feel any different. They felt pretty much the same, both quite hard off the face, which is not a feel that I'm kind of looking for. Right, Lee, let's get some numbers of what you've got from these two irons to start off with. So let's start with your numbers. Okay, so um, mine is the red and yellow ones here. Um, so ball speed with the T200, 129.5, okay. and with the ZX5, 129.7. Okay, so. so 10 shots each we've hit with these. Yeah. They're pretty decent strikes for the most part. Um, so ball speed wide, nothing in it, is there? No, really, really close together. There's, there's next to nothing in it, and the standard deviation is quite close as well. So, right, they're, they're, they're really good numbers. Launch. Launch angle for the T200 is 16.3. For the ZX5 is 16.1. Again, with a really close standard deviation. But interestingly, loft wise, where are we on that with these two clubs? Uh, presented loft. Um, T200 22.4 yeah. and with the ZX5 21.5 so again okay. less than a degree in it. With but but makes loft. sense in what you're getting from your launch to what you're getting in your dynamic loft as well. Yeah. Okay and um, then spin numbers, this is an important one. So spin numbers uh, 4, 4 with the T200, 4, 3 with the ZX5 so right. like 158 as an average out. Yeah. Um, so a little bit low spinning for a 7 iron. For, for for me, but if you look at the sort of the the peak height of it, it's no different to yours, which is with higher spinning. So mine's getting to that peak height a little bit further out than yeah. yours. So yeah. I'm not disappointed with that. And then average carry 193 with the T200, 196 with the ZX5. So you're getting some really good numbers with that one, but it's not overly high in the launch. No. Your spin isn't particularly high for what you should be getting with a seven iron. Yeah. yeah and you're carrying it at 193. Yeah, so, you know, they, they are 31 and 32 degrees. Yeah. Um, sorry, so they're, 30 they're and 31. They're like a six iron. Yeah, so it's, like it's, a six iron. But even in a six, a six iron, Lee, I mean, I would be questioning that, that spin possibly with Lee's six iron numbers. I'd want to see them come up a little bit. Yeah, I'd like it above um, 5,000. I'd like your spin numbers, basically, yeah. with, with that club. Yeah, absolutely right. But that's still solid, solid numbers, eh? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not displeased with okay, that. Okay, what are we getting from my numbers then? So, ball speed for you, 119.3 with a T200, 118.7 yeah. with a ZX5, so 0.6 of a mile an hour in it. Yeah. Really close. Yeah, Again, okay. really close standard deviation. Uh, launch angle, 18.7 and 19.7, so a degree in it. So I'm always looking for a 7 iron. I'm looking for around sort of 19 degrees is what I'm kind of looking for from from the iron again that all depends on what loft that i've got on them but around 19 degrees i'm always thinking that's pretty good and then spin uh 5300 50, and 50 like there's 50 revs in it yeah so, so they're they are. pretty much performing the same and then what am i carrying these two clubs so you're carrying in 172 the t200 170 the zx5 so just that little bit more ball speed yeah that that spin, pretty much the same, but a little bit more ball speed's giving me just that extra couple of yards that I'm getting out of the T200 compared to the Yeah, I mean, we look at the, the club head speed for all of us, like 96.7, 96.6, they're exactly the same, and yours yeah. are 89.9, 89.9. It is, it's down to, for you, the T200 is 0.1 more efficient yes. than the ZX5, which is giving you that extra yardage. Yeah, absolutely right. So, and then uh, just quick on our loft, 25.6 loft compared to 26. Yeah, um, and the T200 is one degree stronger loft than the ZX5, so it's... Yeah, well it's that's where the ball speed's coming from. So yeah. I'm just get, getting a little bit, I'm getting a little bit less loft, which is compressing that ball just a little bit more and getting it out there just a fraction more. But again, one of the concerns that I have there though is you know, that's particularly low from the spin numbers that we're seeing at 5.3 on both of these. You know, if I'm comparing that to a six iron, which is kind of where these lofts are in comparison to what I would use, I would still look at that as a little on the low side. So I'd have to, well, I'd want to do something about that kind of whether I need to change my deliveries a little bit just to increase my spin maybe just you know if I could in angle of attack maybe a little bit more down on the ball might just help to increase it or even a change of ball or well, yeah a change you of know, ball would bring the spin up or a slight loft tweak one degree yeah, loft. but yeah, as soon absolutely. as you start doing that you're playing with bounce on the clubs as you well right? So. Right. so which one is it for you ZX5 ZX5, you said it at the beginning, you've obviously yeah. done a bit of testing on these before anyway, yeah, yeah. but ZX5, it just jumps out to you as a, 
as something that you'd prefer to put in the bag? Yeah, I mean, I know these are, are really strong lofted and you know, they're going a long way for me at a seven iron, but I can, I can change that around. I can go five to pitching wedge and then maybe have an extra wedge. Um, so there's options there. I've got to look at this as a loft as opposed to a number, but I've just found that the ball comes off better than this. It feels a lot better than the T200 for me. So out of these two, it's got to be the ZX5 all day going in my bag. What about you, Dan? Which one's going in the bag for you? So I'm going to agree with you, Lee. I would put in the Shrixen for me over the Titleist in this particular model. And for a couple of reasons, really. I think the overall look of the actual club is a little bit better in the Shrixen than it is in the Titleist, again, purely for me. However, when I look down on the top rail of both of them, I prefer the Titleist over the Shrixen. I don't like that flat kind of look on top that the Shrixen are often, but it comes down to, for me, a little bit of that offset. I think, and maybe it's because of the chrome effect on the Titleist over the Shrixen that maybe that offset is maybe enhanced a little bit in my eye line, but just purely based on that, I would go with the Shrixen from that side of it. Now, when it comes down to feel off the face and the sound off the face, to me, they are almost identical. They both feel particularly hard off the face, which is a bit of a negative. And it's something that I want you to think about when you go to test these types of irons. Think about that feel off the face. Just put a comparison between maybe a player's iron and maybe a game improvement iron and just see what you think um, from the feel off the face of these two clubs. Let me know though, put your comments down below. I'd like to hear what you think about these two clubs. Are these a sort of club that you would be looking to possibly put in the bag? Have you been out and tested these clubs or are you even using these clubs? We'd like to hear in the comments. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel and you like what you're seeing, hit that subscribe button. We've got lots of more content coming your way, but for now, we'll catch up with you again soon.